Michigan farmer was digging in a field when he discovered something amazing. We all dream of discovering something extraordinary one day, whether it's a technological breakthrough, a brilliant business idea, or a special treasure. Every discovery is unique. But what a Michigan farmer named Jesse Bristle discovered while digging in a field was amazing. You want to watch the whole video and find out what was hidden underground. Water in the soil Before we talk about James and his discovery, I have some other dazzling discoveries for you. All of them happened on a farm, where we never expect to find anything exciting, except earthworms and tractors perhaps. This first discovery dates back to 1916 in a field in Nevada, USA. At first, it didn't seem unusual. A farmer was digging on his field to make a well. His land was in the middle of the desert, and it was extremely dry. A well could provide the necessary water for his field. He thought he had to dig for a while before reaching the groundwater, so he started digging. But when he reached the water after digging for some time, a surprise awaited him. The water wasn't as clean and cold as he had expected, but hot. It was almost boiling. It also bubbled out of the ground with tremendous pressure after he had made a hole. He had to quickly escape to avoid getting burned while the water kept coming. Apparently, his field was situated on top of a geothermal rock formation. Under this rock formation, lava brought the groundwater to boiling point, and because of the new hole, the water managed to reach the surface. As a result, the field was completely unusable for agriculture. The geyser, which was accidentally created, was left alone for years. However, the water kept bubbling up, and over time, the minerals in the thermal water left their traces. This slowly created several terraces and a tall tower around the geyser's mouth. A few years later, a geothermal energy company visited the geyser to see if they could use the place to generate energy. They drilled another hole in the ground, and again, water gushed out of it with great force. So much force that it removed the pressure on the farmer's original hole. No more water comes out of this hole, only out of the new one. However, the water that came up wasn't hot enough to be used for energy, so it was left untouched once again. Now, more than 60 years later, the new geyser is surrounded by a complex of terraces. The water is still gushing out with force, and what is called the fly geyser has now become a tourist attraction. I guess the farmer who wanted to just dig a well didn't see this coming. Roman Helmet This brings us to a very welcome discovery. This discovery was also made on a farm, but not by the farmer himself. But he did become wealthy as a result of it. What would you do if you found something that was worth millions? Just quit your job and live on a tropical island? On a farm in England in 2010, two field searchers, a father and a son, were using a metal detector. They had permission from the owner of the farm, Eric Robinson, to explore his fields. What these investigators, who wish to stay anonymous, found was something unbelievable. The father and son often went out together to search fields for objects with their metal detector. You can find beautiful items in the fields in many cases, such as old coins and other utensils from the past. But in two years, they had never found more than small metal objects, but that day in May, they hit the jackpot. In addition to a large boulder in the ground, they found several metal objects, including a large copper thing the size of a head. It turned out to be a copper alloy helmet with an elaborate design and beautiful embellishments. At first, the searchers thought that the object dated back to the Victorian era. They knew that they had found something special, and they contacted the authorities that register archaeological discoveries. However, they didn't want to take the helmet there, because it was only one object and it wasn't made of precious metal. They were allowed to keep the helmet, and together with Eric the landowner, they decided to put it up for auction. And wow, that paid off for them. Before they could put it up for auction, a private restorer had to restore the helmet completely. It then became clear what a beautiful object they had found. It turned out that it didn't come from the Victorian era, but from the Roman era so it was much older than they expected. The copper helmet had two parts, and the visor depicted presumably the handsome face of Paris from Troy. On the beautiful curls was a Phrygian cap, with on top of it a griffin with his front leg on an amphora. The helmet was in an exceptionally good condition, and now that it had been completely restored, many museums and collectors got excited about the discovery. 
In the meantime, the area around the helmet had been scanned more thoroughly, and it turned out that a Roman settlement had once been located on a field where the helmet had been found. The prestigious auction house Christie's in London would auction off the helmet. And now you can guess the amount of money it ultimately yielded. The auction was exciting, and several parties were competing fiercely against each other. Many wanted to get their hands on the beautiful object, and the price kept rising. When the hammer was dropped, the final amount was a staggering 2.5 million euros. That was far more than the field searchers with the metal detector had imagined. They shared the astounding amount with Eric Robinson, the farmer who had owned the land where they found the helmet. Even with half of the amount, you don't have to go to work again, right? I'm going to buy a metal detector. Anyway, the farmer didn't buy an island with it, but a house for each of his two daughters. He just happily continued to work on the farm. James Bristle Next, we come to the Michigan farmer, who was digging in a field when he discovered something unique. Do you want to know what he found? Give this video a thumbs up if this is why you are here today, and check if you have already subscribed to our channel. We continuously add new amazing videos, and when you turn on the notification bell, you'll never miss one. So what exactly did the farmer discover? It was truly unbelievable. James Bristle is a soya bean grower and was digging in one of his fields with a friend on a very ordinary Monday. They were installing drainage pipes and had to dig fairly deep into the ground. At one point, however, James hit a large and hard object. At first, he thought it might be a pole from a fence that was bent completely. But when he pulled out the object and wiped off the earth, he saw that it wasn't wood, nor was it metal or any other material made by man. He showed it to his friend Trent Satterthwaite, who helped him that day, and Trent jokingly said, maybe it's a dinosaur bone. Both of them had no idea what it was, but James sensed it might be a unique find. That's why he decided to ask for advice. Because the object resembled something like a bone, he called the paleontology department at the University of Michigan. He got Dan Fisher on the line, professor of paleontology and director of the university's paleontological museum. After hearing James's story, he decided to come and have a look. And guess what? The enormous object was indeed a bone. The bone of a woolly mammoth that must have lived some 15,000 years ago. James had found a rib of an ancient mammoth, and it soon became clear that more bones were in the ground. Dan Fisher immediately called in his excavation team, and they started digging, with James's permission, of course. Although the discovery didn't work out well with his tight schedule for sewing, he also knew that this was a remarkable discovery and that the researchers needed to do their work. He promised to give the team one whole day to pull the skeleton out of his field. First of all, they pulled out the remaining ribs of the enormous animal, as well as a hip bone and the spine. It got fascinating at the end of the spine because there was indeed a mammoth skull, and on that skull there were a couple of giant tusks, almost undamaged. This was every paleontologist's dream, and Dan Fisher could hardly restrain his enthusiasm. This was a fantastic discovery, perhaps one of the 10 most significant finds in Michigan's history. With a crane, they lifted the enormous skull with tusks from below the ground. Several people watched the excavation, which was becoming quite a thrill in the meantime. When the skull appeared above the ground, you get a good idea of how immense this animal was when it was still alive. Woolly mammoths lived on the northern American continent from about 10,000 to 15,000 years ago. Research revealed that this specimen was about 40 years old when it died and that humans had probably killed it. They found several human weapons in the bones vicinity, and it was also noticeable that certain parts of the animal were missing. These were probably the parts that had been dragged away by the hunters thousands of years ago for them to eat. The rest of the body was then placed in a lake to preserve the meat for later. However, the hunters never returned, and the mammoth has been lying there all these years. They took the bones to the laboratory for further examination. Afterwards, James needed to decide what he wanted to do with the skeleton because it was found on his land. However, his wife warned him that there was no way the skull would be placed above the fireplace. The thing was too big to deal with anyway, and James also wanted more people to enjoy the discovery. He therefore decided to donate the whole skeleton to the museum. Needless to say that Dan was more than satisfied with this. He said that the mammoth would be named the Bristle Mammoth in honor of James, 
and that after meticulous research and conservation, it would be given a place of honor in the museum. Such an honor to have something like that named after you, right? Give this video a thumbs up if you also think it's a beautiful discovery. Have you ever found something special below the ground? Tell us in the comments and then watch one of our other videos.